Your sunshine, your sunshine, your sunshine shining down on all oh, your sunshine, all oh, your sunshine, all oh, your sunshine shining down on me. Your sunshine, your sunshine, your sunshine shining down on me. Oh, your sunshine, all oh, your sunshine, your sunshine. Ladies and gentlemen, a very, very, very good morning. Special for Mon Copain for Lutke. A very good morning, especially to all the real short track fans who are in the stadium right now. Good job here on the final day of 
the IGO World Short Track Championships. It's good to see my uh, British friends up here. And of course, we want to see the Union Jack flying when British skaters are on the ice. Hugo Gomez.
once again, ladies and gentlemen. The very warmest of welcome to you indeed to Rotterdam and the World Championships of Short Track Speed Skating. This is what's coming up today on the last day of competition. And you join us in time to enjoy a whole host of repechage action. Wait your appetite for those big finals taking place before the close of play. Super Sunday. These are all of the officials who will be we'll presiding over the competition the today. Good luck to them as they the take charge for the last time at the 2024 20, World Championships. One four three till one four six. If you have a schedule to start this day, an official announcement of our jury about yesterday's relay races. Yesterday, Team Belgium got a penalty. Well, we are and that ready to begin with these gone. repechage races. So, our referees decided to advance Belgium to the B final. Good news for Team Belgium. Which is the penalty number one in the women's 1,000 meters repechage quarterfinals. The video build, the the World Championships of Team Belgium. Track speed skating. The repechage, a vital second chance for all of these competitors. Uh, let's like welcome our first race the of Poland. First race in the repechage. Quarterfinals, very thousand. experienced, a European First championship and medalist. Place skater from there is uh, Chaya Tataisong of fastest, Thailand, who's only 17 but competed at the Winter Youth Olympic Games and recently. Betty Muska of Thai. Germany. 20 year old who has competed at her first world championships in Rotterdam. Ready. This is the first repechage quarter final in the women's 1000 meters in Rotterdam at the Short Track Speed Skating World Championships. A very good day to you and uh, good luck to all of these the competitors. Two days, we We're watching now the and we'll be watching over the next uh, three it's races after this. The first and second will go through to the semi-finals. The short track conscience of Maximum the Maximum of two fastest third place skaters will race. qualify for the Repechage semi-finals as well. So even uh, not counting for advanced quarterfinals, you've only got a 50 shot if you're third. So we should see some very bold racing to get into that top two. It is the Chathai Song of Thailand who leads. Julie Letai of the United States of America is in second position. The bronze medalist in the relay from the Four Continents Championships. As we have last year. Four and a half more laps to go here and uh, Julie Letai is uh, speeding up here the race. Letai now taking uh, control of things with uh, Betty Murska. Quickly followed by uh, Betty Murska. Position. And we have Nicola Mazur slotting into third place as uh, now we're seeing a little separation. Gerentria Patulia of Mongolia uh, is back in Fifth well, position. We'll continue plus two times the third. I mentioned before about the uh, young Mongolian. It's an international debut in the sport. Entering the final the here, so the the Julie Letai uh, and Muska are looking good value for the one and two. That is indeed what we're going to see. So Letai, Muska and Mazur in third, third position. Place, Hoping that that will be a good enough time. Third place for Nicola Mazur. One minute. 45.21, the current fastest third place time. And also a warm welcome again to our referee team on the ice and in the video room. On the ice, not making any movements, Nothing so we expect particularly no. troublesome about this for. There it is. It's the official result now. It's Julie Lakai. Betty is quite early on in the race. Qualify for the Repechage semi-finals. Remember Nicola Mazur's time of 145-170 as obviously the fastest third time. 
This one, is our second point one seven. So a little adjustment in that time for Mazur. That's the fastest third place time. Heat number two of the women's repechage quarterfinals at the World Championships. Gwendolyn Dodde, the 25 year old from France, will race in this along with the very experienced Olga Tihonova, an Olympian from Beijing. She was part of the Kazakhstan squad that was fifth in the mixed relay competition. Representing Hong Kong China is Lam Ching Yan, only just turned 18. Go to the start. Ready. Repechage quarterfinal number two in the women's 1,000 metres. That will go back for a restart. And we look at Tamara Tokarova of Slovakia, who is the youngest in the race at just 17. So once again, those rules, the first and second place from each race will go through to the semi-finals. Maximum of two fastest third place skaters will also join them. The second time of asking, we have uh, a clear beginning to this second repechage quarterfinal in the women's 1,000 metres. Katarina Buric of uh, Croatia leading early on the uh, graduate of the University of Zagreb. Second, it is the young Slovakian Tamara Tokarova. Lam Chingyan of the Hong Kong Sports Institute. Celebrated her 18th birthday at the start of the month in third place. That's all changed now as uh, Olga Tihonova has come through into a leading position. Won her first international medal at the short track uh, for Continents Championships. Was at the start of the season, start of the year I should say. Tikhonova leading, Buric now losing second place to uh, Gwendolyn Dode, World University Games uh, champion. Tikhonova and Dode now seizing control. Lam Chingyan has uh, drifted behind Buric. So we reach the bell, it is Tihonova and Dode, well ahead now of Buric, who's got to try and get one of those fastest third place times. Oh, well done to Lam, who's moved in front. And Lam will take third place behind Tihonova and Dode. And Lam has done that in 1 minute 36.48. So that is uh, way faster. So let us go back and uh, have a look at the action. Tihonova decided to take control of it at just the right time. The Olympian judging it well. Dode also timed her move expertly. Tihonova with a win, Dode second. 
and Lamb looking pretty tidy with that time as things stand. Here we go with our third the third of four quarterfinals coming up now. And uh, there will be some interest here for Tineke Dendulk and the Belgian delegation watching on, who are vocal and uh, hoping for the best for her. We also have Gabriela Topolska. Alina Asgalieva, Aurelie Levec and Annabelle Green making up this five strong quarterfinal. Ready. Quarterfinal heat number three, the women's 1000 meters repechage stage. A second chance for every single competitor involved. And it's a great thing, the repechage system. It uh, means that your world championships do not come to an end right after one race, provided that you were not penalized. Henri Levesque of Grenoble, beautiful part of France, leads the way. Annabelle Green of Great Britain was in second place, has now drifted back. Second now being occupied by Alina Asgalieva, turned 18 last month, the undergraduate at the West Kazakhstan Innovation and Technological University. Topolska of Poland now assumes second place. A very accomplished musician, a very fine pianist is Gabriela Topolska. And uh, she's hitting all the right notes at the moment. Leading this one with Levec second. Green has moved back up into third, but just keep an eye on Dendulk, who is at the back at the moment has now got to time that move here goes Tineke Dendulk and we reach the bell with Dendulk with a little too much to do by the looks of things to Polska and Levesque will take first and second very close to that with a good time is as Galieva 1 minute 36.15 so to Polska and Levesque are fine and we've just had the Best third place time there set by Alina Asgalieva. She's developed so much as a competitor over the last couple of seasons to Polska. Competition experience that uh, feeling of getting on a continental podium for the first time all of it bolstering her credentials to Polska and Levec qualifying automatically Alina Asgalieva setting the fastest time that we've seen so far as a third place competitor and this brings us to the last of the four repechage quarterfinals in the women's 1000. 49 is Jofia Konya. 29 years of age now. Won her first European Championship medal in 2014 in Dresden. She's been around for a while. Go to the start. The repechage quarterfinals for the women's 1000 meters, and this is the last race. Jofia Konya is in the leading position at the moment. We have two from Ukraine, Uliana Dubrova and Svetlana Repetska. Dubrova wears 90, Repetska wears 91. Amelia Chua. The young athlete from Singapore leads the way, debutant at the World Championships after three World Junior Championships. A UK-based athlete who did so well to qualify for the Winter Youth Olympic Games in the Republic of Korea. She's grown enormously as a competitor of late. Amelia Chua, she now cedes the lead 
to uh, Dubrova. Second place is Valentina Ashcic. The trailblazer at the Olympic Winter Games for Croatia. Ashcic over Dubrova with Konya now looking to move up into second position. Svetlana Repetska wearing 91 uh, just over the shoulder of her own teammate as the pull away starts to happen from Ashcic and Konya. It's going to be interesting to see whether the Croatian can uh, hold off any challenge from uh, Dubrova and Repetska. Looks like she's going to do that quite comfortably. So Konya is through, Ashcic is through, and on the line, I think it was actually just Repetska narrowly. But it will not be good enough as a third place qualification time if my uh, calculations are accurate, and goodness only knows if they are. for Konya and Ashcic. Job well done. No We have confirmation that Konya and Ashcic are through. Svetlana Repetska not quite fast enough. Well, that brings to a close our coverage of the women's 1,000 metres repechage quarterfinals. But on we go rapidly to the next order of business. This is the men's competition. Heat number one in the men's 1,000 metres repechage quarter finals. Quentin Furcock of France. Winter Youth Olympic Games champion. 61 is Radek Fikas of the Czech Republic. Also uh, an international athlete in roller speed skating. The men's 1,000 metres repechage quarterfinals, heat number one. Now, this is going to be very, very interesting because we have seven heats. So only the winner is absolutely sure of a place in the repechage semi-final stage. Consequently, there is enormous pressure on each athlete to get a good result. Second will only be good enough for a maximum of three, and that's assuming no advancements. Now we have Martin Kolent of Croatia, who's about to be passed by Lord Jan Shuo of Hong Kong, China, who's caught Kolent, and that will go to video review. Meanwhile, Kontan Furkok and Radek Fikus have now taken over. But there are only four meaningfully remaining. Furkok, who's been a world championship medalist in half the distance. Now he hit the bell. So Fikus of the Czech Republic behind Furkok. What do we see from Tarek Omaragic of Bosnia and Herzegovina? And that's not quite going to be enough for him. So Furkok has got the win. Fikus with 1 minute 31.21. Just waiting for official confirmation of that time. 1 minute 31.184 for Fikus. That's the second place time that we're going to be interested in from a qualification standpoint. But as I say, nothing to be confirmed right now because naturally there is a little video review 
What's going on? Interesting to see what determination the uh, officials make about who was responsible. Oh, we look at it again here. Law and Collinch, the two who uh, collided. What was the nature of it? Who were in a leading position early on in the race. Still to come in this session, we've got uh, mixed relay semi finals and the women's and men's relay B finals. That's after we've taken you all the way through the uh, repechage system for these athletes. So there is no call there. After the video review, it means that uh, Quentin Furcock is the uh, confirmed winner. Radic Ficus second. Shared responsibility is the decision. Considered to be uh, much of a muchness between Lord Jan Shaw and uh, Martin Collins. Quarterfinal number two in the repechage system for the men in the 1,000 metres competition at Rotterdam 2024, the World Short Track Speed Skating Championships. Well, this is quite some race. It shows just how difficult it is to navigate through to the main draw. Ready. The men's repechage quarterfinals in the 1,000 metres competition. What a race we anticipate here. We have Fulkan Akar of Turkey wearing 31. That was uh, very tight early on. We've got Marcus Howard of the United States of America wearing 82 and Kim Gun U of Republic of Korea wearing 126. Also in this is Lucas McDonald of New Zealand. He's at the front of the pack at the moment. The gentleman who started as uh, both an ice hockey player and figure skater. Short track was originally his method of training for ice hockey, but uh, took over completely. And he's done so well at it. Very fine young athlete. Now Kim goes into the lead ahead of McDonald. 166 is Tibor Komaritsky, the 18-year-old from Slovenia. He's just trying to stay in this one as best he can at the moment. Kim Akar pulling away from Howard. He's going to need a big finish, and he's done well here. Marcus Howard to make up some of that ground. Definitely a three-way contest going into this final lap. Akar's dropped away. Kim Gunu is going to win it. Howard will take second. Akar in third position. An agonizing finish for Furkan Akar, the trailblazing Turk who won bronze at the European Championships last year. Just waiting to see if that is confirmed. Looks as though there's no uh, review necessary. That really is unfortunate for Furkan Akar. 
in the second World Cup in Canada. Is now our official winner. Let's have a look back at it. And the time of well. Marcus Howard, 127, 110 is the fastest the second time so far. Yeah, that's where he just uh, doesn't quite get that turn right. Kim Gunu is your automatic qualifier and Marcus Howard with 1 minute 27.11 has produced the fastest second place time we've seen so far. Heat number three in the men's repechage quarter finals. This is Oleg Hande and Adrian Duarte, along with Zdenek Sepal, Jakub Karabin, Frederick Pedersen, and Prajwal Sharat. There he is, Adrian de Wachter of Belgium. Decorated continental relay medalist. Still a very young man, he's only 22, de Wachter. Doing a little bit of remedial work, unsurprisingly, on the uh, surface. And once again, busy with their marvellous job. They're doing the Wizards in White, our tracks to <laughs> I like that, the Wizards in White. From the Netherlands, doing a marvellous job for the past two and a half days. They've done uh, fantastically, uh, quite right. That the Making arena the presenter team confirms team. that. And they've also done excellently, the uh, arena presenters in venue. They've helped uh, provide a superb atmosphere at these championships. This is a closed door session, but uh, the public sessions have been so enthusiastically attended. Brilliant crowds. Repechage quarter final action, the men's 1,000 metres. This is heat three of seven. The winner goes through, and there is only a three in seven chance that you will make it through if you are second in your heat. This is tight, very tight. Leading is Oleg Hande, he wears 71, the Ukrainian who uh, not so long ago completed his degree in coaching and sports studies from the National University of Physical Education. A young man who's a while, a while away from thinking about his university studies is uh, Frederick Pedersen, just 17. As you can see, he's trying to defend his lines. Uh, his eyes in his back to cover up. Second is Zenek Sepal whose older sister, Mihaila, well, it's really unfortunate as uh, we see a really, really chaotic race here. And uh, all of this means that completely unexpectedly, the uh, young Norwegian Pedersen is up there with uh, Hande. Naturally, there's going to be a lot of video review going on. Sharat is in third position. And all that uh, Hande and Pedersen have got to do is just calmly get across the line here. And here the finish. First well, place. lots to unpack. Hande wins it. Pedersen is second. And congratulations as well to Prajwal Sharat of India, who's finished third. And that's a, a really good result. He'll be uh, delighted about that, the World Championship debutant. But the question is what uh, we're going to see in terms of video review here because we lost quite a lot of the competitors. So much to unpack. I was uh, telling you about the family background of one of the gentlemen as he went down, Zenek Sepal, whose older sister Mihaila has competed twice at the Olympic Winter Games. We also lost the Ragter and, as a consequence, Jakub Karabin. That really has been one of the most extraordinary repechage races that we've seen so far. 
and it really is too soon to be sure of anything at the moment. Great experience making important short track meters on the highest level. If you are competing, just say from a timing point of view, looking at Pedersen finishing second in that race, it's not a hugely fast second place time. got confirmation of Hyundai taking the victory. Pedersen, second place. It's a brilliant result for the young Norwegian to be in a position where he's holding one of those fastest second place spots. We go to the next race. This seven heat strong field. So difficult to get back into the main draw. And that's the reward for all of these athletes. The opportunity to re enter the competition. And they've got to get through two rounds. Quarterfinal number four. It's the men's 1,000 meter repechage. Rotterdam 2024 hosting this tense, tense atmosphere on the final morning of competition. Wesley Park of the United States of America is in a leading position with uh, Metehan Atan of Turkey second. Third place is the Austrian Nico Anderman, national champion, and a very fine skier as well when he's not involved in this sport. Now we see Peter Murphy of Luxembourg, Winter European Youth Olympic Festival champion and the graduate of exercise science from Lunex University in Diffadanga. 191 is the teenager Maris Manis of Latvia. And we also have uh, the back of the pack. Oh, as, uh, we've lost two there. That's very, very problematic for Park and for Atan as well. So it means that the Latvian St. Manis is leading, but not for long. Nico Anderman has got the victory. St. Manis second and third. Denbileg Munkeren of Mongolia. Wow, that looked like a bad crash for Lots of review action. Uh, and it will be centered around Atan and Wesley Park. So Peter Worth, the head referee, will now have a lot to uh, look at. That's the incident that's going to be reviewed first of all when Atan and Park went straight into each other. We've got two video reviews to process or to be processed. And all of it ultimately working to the benefit of Stern Manis and Andaman. Although not a great surprise to see Andaman in a strong position. He's a very good young racer. Just a question of whether really sufficient uh, space was given by the uh, skater on the outside, 
Mete Hanat'tan. This is an interesting angle from which to see it. Seems to be a connection on the skates. So they watch and they wait. And we will get a decision soon. But it's important that the officials take as long as they need to take to judge this correctly. Deliberation continues in Rotterdam at the heart of it all. This meeting of Metehan Atan and Wesley Park, the young American born in California. And here is the official results. So there has been no change to the standings. Looks as though responsibility has been shared. We'll wait for confirmation of that. Nico Anderman is your winner. He goes through. The only one to have a secure place. So one away with our fifth of seven quarterfinal. Once again, Tobias Wolf, Jasper Patik Peter, John McCartabron, Liam O'Brien, and British. That uh, time of Sternman is the slowest we've had so far. So here we go. It is indeed shared responsibility. They're considered to have gone into each other. Heat number five now in the men's 1,000 metres repechage quarterfinals. He has a party. Ready. The men's 1,000 metres repechage quarterfinals. Heat number five. We have five in this race. And uh, we now only have three in this race. Liam O'Brien. was also uh, the uh, youngster from Thailand, Sean Lachata Taprom, who went down, leaving Theo Collins, Feta Yazapati and uh, Tobias Wolf. We've had a very review-heavy session of repechage races. And I said right at the start that we were going to see a lot of people really pushing hard to secure first place because there's no joy from second position automatically. Only three of the seven as a maximum to go through. And it's led to some aggressive and slightly muddy races. That's understandable because of what's at stake. They can be so nerve-wracking, these repechage heats. So Yezapati is ahead of Theo Collins, Tobias Wolf, the teenager from Austria, is in second place. It remains to be seen whether Collins can get round, uh, and he can't. It's Yezapati ahead of Collins. Collins' time, 1 minute 31.515. That, I don't think, is going to be enough for Collins. We'll just wait for confirmation of it, though. But is Collins in jeopardy anyway?
because he was involved in the incident that saw the Irishman Liam O'Brien go down. So that's why there's another video review going on. What is clear is that Peter Yazapati was uninterested in all of it because he got the job done. And that took down O'Brien and also saw Taprom raced out of it as well. And it will be interesting to see if, again, there's a space infringement perhaps from uh, Collins. Young Theo Collins, an undergraduate in physics at the University of Nottingham, but from Guildford in Surrey. As we have a look at uh, Tobias Wolf, he's been a national competitor in roller speed skating as well. And the final decision is made. Now it looks as though it's all being. Signed on the dotted line by Peter Worth. Here it is. What does it mean for First Collins? Penalty. penalty for Theo Collins. And Liam O'Brien, as a result, has been advanced. So it's the lane change. That's the issue. And winner fifth quarter final was Yazapati Petr. Petr Yazapati is also through. Bontovic Barmas, Robin Bendik, Danilo Fedorenko, Jan Hun Ben Jung, two. We go to the penultimate repechage quarter final. The men's 1,000 metres. Shut us in space. Go to the start. Ready. Welcome to Rotterdam and the World Championships of Short Track Speed Skating. It's heat number six in the men's 1,000 metres repechage quarterfinals. The winner advances. And as a result of the advancement to the formal advancement of Liam O'Brien in the previous heat, it means that second place is now even less likely to get you through to the semi final stage. It's Marcus Howard and Radek Fikas who are currently holding on to a second place qualification spot. And the fastest time is one. Minute 27.11. Now we have the two Germans at the front of this. Robin Bendig wearing 77 and Jan and Ben Jung wearing 63. Now the Hungarian Bolaj Bontovic wearing 68 has interceded. And that's also provided a chance for Danilo Fedorenko wearing 80 to get himself involved as well. We have the veteran Miodrag Popovic in this and uh, we now have lost one of those uh, front three competitors Jung has disappeared and all of it means that Bontovic gets the victory Fedorenko is in second and that's good from Fedorenko's perspective it's faster than Radek Fikus so Fedorenko with one race to go is holding on to a qualification berth Bolaj Bontovic is the winner. But the question is whether we might get more complication here because 
Is there a suggestion of Bontovic impeding Young? Well, just hold on to your thoughts for a moment because this one isn't quite crystal clear. It's Bontovic who seems to have won it, but it is now dependent on the refereeing decision as this one goes to a formal review process. So it, it will be interesting to see whether this comes down to one skater being culpable or whether there's a shared responsibility between the two of them, Jung and Bontovic. Eagle-eyed, watching every single detail of this one. And he's nervous. Understandably so. There is one more quarter-final to come. Yang and Ben Young, the 21 year old, watching on. They're both 21. Here we go with the official result to start with a penalty. And we have got There's a penalty. A penalty. Bontovic is Barras. gone. And Penalty's that means that Young is advanced and, and Fedorenko is the winner. Bolaj Bontovic. Well, I didn't want to say it, but it. It did look a little troublesome for the Hungarian when you scrutinised that replay. So this is a final it's the failure to give way that I was referring to, wondering whether it would come down to shared responsibility. But the judgment of the officials is that there was clear impeding of Jung. Heat number seven, the last repechage quarter final for the men in the 1000 meters. Ready. What a dramatic session it's been. We've had so many reviews. We've had lots of athletes see their chances disappear due to collisions. And I just remind you what's at stake. If you get through these two repechage rounds, you are back in the game. Your path to the championship of the world is open once more. No wonder we're seeing so much intrigue with only the winner guaranteed to go through. And we've now had two advancements, so it means that Marcus Howard is the only second place finisher who's actually got a spot in the semi-final stage. One minute 27.11 is what you've got to beat if you're gonna come second and go through. Tristan Navarro of France leads, no he doesn't. Gali Akhmatov leads and Navarro's down. That will be reviewed as well. My, my, my. Gali Akhmatov is way away out in front, but I don't think this one is done and dusted yet. That also looked like a, a close uh, shave between a couple of them. Now, meanwhile, for now, Gali Akhmatov is over the line, but it's only for now. Second, Linards Lysans, that will not be fast enough to go through. There's no doubt about that. Gali Akhmatov, who was in a battle with Tristan Navarro until Navarro went to ground. We've got to wait and see if anything changes or is there contact of blades? And 
And that was later on as well with Donchev wearing 84 and uh, Linard Lysans wearing 190. And here it is, no change. Relief for Adil Galiakhmetov. He goes through, and as I said earlier, Lysan's not fast enough to go through as a second-place finisher. Only one of the second-place finishers went through. Congratulations to Marcus Howard on that accomplishment, because we had two advancements of Yang and Ben Jung and Liam O'Brien. All of that means we'll be back in about 10 minutes' time for the women's semi-finals in the repechage for the 1,000 metres. See you soon. Thank you. Inmiddels op het ijs natuurlijk. Inmiddels onze twee B's. Ijsmeesters Bas en Beert. En haar ijsmaster Beert. Has birthday today, ladies and gentlemen. For our ijsmaster, all together. Hippe de Piep. Hij geeft een rondje. Gefeliciteerd, Beert. Gewoon werken op je verjaardag. Beert, volgens mij doet het. Samen met collega Bas van IJsbaan Tilburg. Zorg voor een fantastische ijsstoor hier al drie dagen lang. En ook de dagen daarvoor om op te trainen.
Welcome back and welcome if you just joined in here in the short track temple of the worlds Rotterdam Ahoy ISU World Short Track Championships we are going to attend the women's thousand meter repechage semi-finals and the first place on we go with the action in Rotterdam and some big show. races coming up so the winners are getting this is it these ground. athletes the have arrived the at the last locked door of these world championships the best short of the win world this race in the Netherlands. and they will be given a key countries. they'll be in the quarter and final stage of the main draw and it will be one, destination World Championship gold once again in the and minds of them all. This is a massive hurdle to overcome. And, uh, the ice. and we wish them all the best. Some of them are very young, like Lam Qingyan, just 18 from Hong Kong, China. It's Kazakhstan, uh, La France, uh, Hong Kong, Croatia. We just saw the more experienced Olga Tihonova there, who's uh, 26. The first repechage semi-final in the women's 1,000 metres. Winner goes through to the main draw. Ready. It's very simple. You've got to win this. If you do so, you are in the quarterfinals of the main draw and your bid to become champion of the world is back on. And away with this first semi-final repechage, 1,000 metres women. It's a tough, tough route. Olga Tihonova of Kazakhstan is leading the way. In second position is Gwendolyn Dorde of France. The USA's Julie Letai is third. We have Valentina Ashchic of Croatia wearing 46. She's in fourth place. And at the back of the pack is Lam Chin Yang of Hong Kong, China, who did so well in the quarterfinal stage. Now it's Dorde over Tihonova. Slightly uh, cagey feeling to this American so far. Everyone just trying to stay in contention, to stay in touch. Now the move is coming from the American Letai, trying to get up towards those top two. She's having to work very hard to do it. Went a little wide, but she's done all right. Letai, oh, just priced out of that one by uh, Dorde, but Letai's done it. Has she done enough? Oh, now we've lost to Ascic. The uh, Croatian is down. Video review is going to happen. But Letai at the moment is in the lead. That's a bold gambit from Julie Letai, and she's got it right. She's through. Dorde in second position. Tihonova third. Julie Letai worked incredibly hard to get into the leading place. But it's going to be looked at again. It was Valentina Ascic, the experienced Croatian, who went down. So what does all of this mean from a review perspective? Will we get any change to the standings? Just keep an eye on Letai. No this on is so close. Amazing that she actually stayed up right there. That's the moment when Ashchich went down. But my goodness, what an effort from the 23-year-old from Boston. Julie Letai has got the win. She is in. The main draw. Congratulations to the American. And that was raced with purpose. And we welcome on the eyes Gabriela Toposka. One more repechage semi final to come in the women's competition. The winner goes to the quarterfinals proper. And Germany's Betty Muske. Jofia Konya of Hungary. Olympic Winter Games medalist in Beijing. 
Alina Ashgalieva of Kazakhstan, four continents medalist this season. Just her first year as a senior as well. Really strong field, this second repechage semi-final for the women. Who joins Julie Lettai of the United States of America in the next stage? And that is the main draw quarterfinals. Gabriela Topolska of Poland wears 33. Zofia Konya wears 49. And we've lost Betty Murska, the German. Galieva wears 56 and Orly Levesque wears 79. Another video review is going to be necessary. That was close for Konya. Got right up there with Galieva, but Konya is uh, now behind Topolska. Topolska, who turned 23 on the first day of these championships. Ahead of Konya, ahead of Levec, ahead of Asgalieva with Muska out of it. But a video review pending. Still in second place, Konya Tovia from Hungary. Waiting for her moment. Two more laps to go here. Getting close to the final lap. Konya, we expect to make the attack. On to Polska, and here comes the attack from Konya. Wow, what about that judgment from Zofia Konya to Polska now in second place. Konya's got it. Konya's got it. She's through. She's back in the main draw. Zofia Konya, the Hungarian, with an excellent conclusion to the race. Besting Gabriela Topolska of Poland. And the Olympic medalist has reignited her quest for the world title. And again, the track stewards doing a marvelous job. Now that said, her collision with uh, Betty Murska is the subject of review. So celebrations cannot be held just yet. The champagne will have to remain corked for the time being until this is cleared. And it has been cleared. And Jofia Konya has done it. She joins Julie Letai in the main draw proper. Congratulations to those two concluding a dramatic women's repechage. Hasn't that been entertaining? And based on what we saw in the men's quarterfinals, this should be a barnstormer. Repechage semi-final one. The winner is the gentleman who goes back into the main draw. Will it be Adil Galiachmetov wearing 32 of Kazakhstan? Or Quentin Furcock of France, world championship medalist in 2022? Should be a very exciting men's semi final in the repechage competition of the 1000 meters event at Rotterdam 2024. The winner is into the main draw and re-enters the world championship quest at the quarterfinal stage. Liam O'Brien, the young Irishman, decides to go into first place early on with the content Furcock second. And now we see the pacey an exciting uh, youngster, Marcus Howard, go into the lead. When he went to the World Championships in the Netherlands in 2021, it was the first time he actually left the United States of America. So special memories for him being back here. A lot of uh, emotions stirred up. We also have uh, 
Oleg Hande of Ukraine, wearing 71. Gali Akhmatov now moves beyond O'Brien into third position. Kontan Furkop, though, is still the leader. Oh, Howard has just disappeared. We've lost uh, a couple of uh, athletes there. Gali Akhmatov and Howard, video review pending these uh, finishes. And uh, Kontan Furkok is just there ahead of Hande. So, Furkok is the provisional winner. However, there will be at least two moments to scrutinize in that race. A devastated looking Oleg Hande. But we lost Galiachmetov and Howard earlier on, and that is obviously worthy of further scrutiny. Just keep an eye on those two as we look back at this. This is Furcock easing beyond Howard. And here is where we lose Howard. That's interesting. Is there activity from Gali Akhmatov? Oh, and poor Oleg Hande. And here we go. We know what happens. The final decision. Peter Worth is uh, waiting to start. confirm this, and uh, it has been confirmed that Gali Akhmatov is penalised, and Howard has been advanced along with Kontan Furkok. And this is why is failure to give way by Gali Akhmatov. And I have to say, when you look at it from that position there, it is quite clear cut. Well done to the officials on their adjudication. And our attention for the second semi final. Big names on the ice. Kim Gun What a race that this is, is poised to be. We've got Kim Gun U. Peter Yazapati as well. Go start. Ready. It can often be one of the highlights of the day's competition, watching uh, repechage action at the World Championships because there is just so much nervous energy. The hard work that goes into wrestling your way through the quarterfinals to get to this last chance saloon. Kim Gunu leading. And the winner will make their way into the quarter final proper. And in doing that, they will join Kontan Furkok and Marcus Howard. Howard, who was advanced from the previous semi final. So Kim is in first place. Second is Young and Ben Jung, the uh, young German. Third is the Austrian champion Nico Andermann of Vienna. Beautiful city. 117 is Peter Yasapati, the young and exciting Hungarian who's been a World Junior Championship medalist on two occasions, one of them in the 500 metres. 80 is Danilo Fedorenko, hoping for greater happiness than Oleg Hande, his teammate, who was crushed to be uh, just fractionally out of contention in the last race. But this looks to be Kim's all the way. Anderman trying to make his way through past Jung, but always this was Kim gun Oop. The gentleman who was fourth in the Crystal Glow race this season across the World Cups has won it and won it comfortably over Andaman. No movements on the infield, at least not to the video position. So let's assume that Kim Gun Bu got himself. And this is a rare race where we uh, don't have and a video review. As number eight of the world ranking. 
Kim gun U is the winner, and he will join the semi-final one winner, Kontan Furcock, and the advanced Marcus Howard in the quarter-finals. Back to the main draw for Kim. And then we will have the semi-finals of the mixed team relay. Semi-finals mixed team relay at 11.45. DJ Funky Town. Come on, buddy. We have a 15-minute break now. And then we'll return with the 3,000-meter relay women's B final.
More action to come in Rotterdam in this morning session, the uh, penultimate session at the World Championships. We have the uh, mixed relay semi-finals now. Which started with the repercharges in the thousand meters for women and men. And we will now have the mixed team relay semi finals. A warm welcome to all our short track friends from all over the world, 40 participating countries, and we're very happy that you're here. So, coming up Special in this welcome, of course, relay focused part of our session. Mixed relay semi-finals, two of them, and then the women's 3,000-meter relay B final and the men's 5,000-meter relay B final. With us at hashtag World Short Track. Everybody in the Netherlands, heel hartelijk welkom bij de Nederlandse loterij WK Short Track, presented by Odido. What a fascinating championships it's been so far, taking place at the uh, Rotterdam Ahoy. The building that was opened, uh, believe it or not, back in 1950. Obviously, it's had a lot of uh, renovation done since then. Fabulous space and uh, a sold-out crowd expected for the afternoon and evening session. So far, we've had four titles settled. A China double in the men's 500 and 1500 um, for the women, Canada and the uh, Republic of Korea winning the equivalent events. The semi-finals of the mixed relay competition. This is always so entertaining. The mixed relay, the newest of the relay events in the sport. The top two will go to the A final. Third and fourth, provided there are no penalties, of course, will go to the B final. We see the host nation in action here. Second starting position for Team Canada. And special for you is Susanna Schulting. Susanna Schulting and Cassandra Velzebor representing the Netherlands. Welcome to the mixed relay semi finals. 2,000 meters of the track in the Rotterdam Ahoy at the World Championships of Short Track Speed Skating. The Netherlands, Canada, the United States of America, and Belgium. Two will go through to the a final. This is very interesting early on because we've got uh, the Netherlands well ahead of the United States of America with Canada having endured real problems early on. Now representing the Netherlands is uh, Turnbull. And it really is a clear front two at the moment. And world champion world champion Kim Boutin, René Stinge, Stephen Dubois, Jordan Pierre-Gilles, a bronze medal winner yesterday for Team Canada. Jens van Wout of the Netherlands. Decent uh, gap ahead of the USA at the moment. Got a feel for the Canadians. Losing ground very, very early on in this race. USA second with Corinne Stoddard, who is over the shoulder of Cassandra Velzebor. Belgium way back, so really clear at the moment that we've got uh, these two far and away in front looking for a spot in the final. They don't need to push it too far. They don't need to fight for a leading position 
if it puts them at jeopardy. Santos Griswold is close to Schulting. How exciting when these two are racing against each other. Four laps to go in this first semi-final. But courtesy of those problems for Canada right at the start of the race. It's been comfortable for the Dutch and for the USA throughout. Font Vaut pulling ahead of Andrew Ho. So it is Font Vaut across the line ahead of Andrew Ho. Netherlands and the USA. As things stand, we'll go into the A final. Belgium and Canada. We'll go into the B final, but we do have a video review that needs to be completed before that is confirmed. So Peter Worth, the head referee, will check what needs to be checked, and it will centre around what happened to the Canadians. Does look to be simply a loss of equilibrium. So one imagines there isn't going to be much to change here. The Dutch, who are masters of relay competition, they advance to the final with the USA. So, Netherlands and the USA into the A final, Belgium and Canada into the B final. Canada with problems right at the start of the race. The second semi final in the mixed team relay competition in Rotterdam. China, Poland, Italy, and the Republic of Korea are contesting this one. It's race number 159. Once we get to this stage, times are of no consequence. It's just about being in the top two. People's Republic of China with Gongli and Wang Ye. Wang Ye, the very uh, impressive youngster in World Italy. Cup competition this season. As we look at Sun Long wearing 102. And the four there is the Crystal Globe winner, Kim Gilly, 19 year old Lamborghini. Joined by her teammates in what is going to be a very competitive race. Ready. The mixed 2000 meter relay second semi final. On our way. Second semi final here. In the People's League, Republic China. of China, Italy, oh, yeah. the Republic of Korea, Genius and Peter. Poland. Very talented. With the top two. To go through. Team China with, uh, beside Third and fourth will get you a spot in the B final. And world champion Sun Long. But any uh, penalties, and that is your race run and your competition done. Italy with Ariana Siegel, Chiara Betti, Pietro Siegel, and Andrea Cassinelli. And for Korea, it's Kim Gilly, world champion. Shim Shuki, Mila Stormovska in second place. She uh, makes the change over, and the Poles continue to hold second behind the People's Republic of China early on. But the Italians, who have uh, enjoyed so much success in mixed relay competition, they uh, are now actually in fourth position, the Italians, because the Republic of Korea have moved up into third. Ten laps remaining in this exciting sprint format. Next to come, we'll bring you the women's 3,000 meter relay B final and the men's 5,000 meter relay B final to conclude this session. Here is Wang Ye. Olympic champion, Italy, silver medalist. 
on the Olympics. China have led now throughout. Third position here. Into play so now is Gong Li. Italy make their move with Gong Ariana Sigel. Oh, Sigel nearly losing position completely, but holding second place. Good effort there to put the Italians into a good changeover position to bring in Andrea Cassinelli. Watch the Alicelier of Poland now trying to make the move around into second. Didn't quite get it right, though. The Italians have just held second place. China up in front. Can Italy hold on? Trying to make the move, the Republic of Korea with Park Ji Won, but this, as it gets to the bell, is looking as though it's the Italians to hold along with China. And a look over the shoulder brings relief for the Italians because they have got it and managed to earn their place in the final. Pietro Sigel glanced behind him and saw that the job was done. So China and Italy into the A final. And that's it for the official results. After a magnificent race, there was a moment a earlier on game. where you wondered if Italy had ceded position and almost, almost lost balance. And I don't think Great determination the from the team in blue. There it is. The this is where Cellier almost seemed to have. Cassinelli, but uh, what a response from Andrea Cassinelli. It was great entertainment. Confirmation that China and Italy go to the A final. Poland and the Republic of Korea in the B finals. So, the Netherlands, the USA, China, and Italy will contest gold. Final B and the men's relay final B coming up at 12 12. 12 12, we will restart the competition. 12 na 12, the B finals from the Vrouwen in the modern relay. They will see their short track pies athletes later on. Rotterdam, Ahoy. Totso in the final session of competition. A delighted Wang Ye, who's been delightful to watch this season. An exciting young racer and thrilled are the Italians on a great accomplishment. The Netherlands, the USA, China and Italy will contest the World Championship title later. Belgium, Canada, Poland and the Republic of Korea will try to win the B final and hope that there is sufficient complication in the A-final to give them a place on the podium. And we will return in 15 minutes time, or just under 15 minutes time, to bring you the women's 3,000 meter relay B-final. Don't go too far away.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's almost 12, 12. The restart of our The very warmest of welcomes to you indeed to the first of two B finals in relay competition at the World Championships of Short Track Speed Skating in Rotterdam. The Rotterdam Ahoy is hosting all of the action and it's a great pleasure to have your company for it. The women's 3,000 meter relay B final is about to take place. Hungary, the People's Republic of China, Italy and Japan contesting this 3,000 meter relay final for women. It's the B final. You can still end up on the podium if you are victorious in the B final. You just never know what might happen in the A final. All it takes is for a couple of nations to be given penalties. Suddenly you are on the podium. So we have the People's Republic of China there at uh, Fan the Keishin. Across the World Cups this season, the uh, People's Republic of China were the uh, fifth best performers overall. We're looking at the uh, Italians the there. On the first starting position. We just saw Elisa Confortola. There is uh, Gloria Iorati now. The Hungarians, Petra Yazapati. 53 for Hungary, Sara Luka Bachkoi. Zofia Konya, who's already been busy in the uh, repechage for the for women's 1,000 metres, earning a place back in the main draw. So she's had so much to do already today. Let's find out the outcome. Go to the start. Red. The women's 3,000 meter relay B final at the Rotterdam 2024 World Championships of that Short Track the Speed the Skating. The women's 3,000 meter relay B final is race number 160 on your list. Hungary we have the People's now Republic now of China, China Hungary, Italy Gong and Gong Japan. Gong the full squad for the Chinese, uh, Gong Li, who wears 22, Wong Xinran, 29, 35, Wong Ye, 38, Zong Yize and 78, Fan Ke Shin. Oh my goodness me! What an extraordinary situation! Well, 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 the People's Republic of China emerging unscathed from that situation. We'll come back to the rest of the squads later because we've got a lot to unpack now. Twenty-one laps to go for the Chinese. Hungary, Italy and Japan all going to ground and as a result of that China far and away leading this B final. It is going to be reviewed, there was a massive collision centred around Japan and Hungary but my word what a remarkable drama we've had early on in this B final. There is time to get back on track in a relay. More time than you have, obviously, in an individual race, but it asks an awful lot. It's third for Hungary and fourth for Japan. Solid lead by Team China. Three corners on the left. As you see, the People's Republic of China. On the ice. Comfortably leading this one. They're at the back of the pack on the screen, but in reality, they are in a leading position. The Italians second, then Hungary, then Japan. You're looking there at Gong Li of the People's Republic of China. As they almost close up the gap. 
for a lead on my left. Now it is the uh, Italians who are in the second place position. China not a million miles away from getting to a lapping position. Leaders in the race for fifth position overall in the final rank. The Italians have got Hungary over their shoulders. Now we look at uh, Wang Xinran of the Chinese who are leading. Adriana Fontana is uh, in play for the uh, Italians. But there is a lot after this race that needs to be reassessed, courtesy of the video review led by Peter Worth. And for China, that's only five laps to go, yes, Quite extraordinary early stages of this relay race, giving way to a, a strange looking conclusion. One with China far, far ahead, though appearing to be in third position. It's the Italians in second place, so we're having a look at them now. 44 is uh, Gloria Iorati. Finish up race for Team China. Last moments now for the Chinese as they hit the bell. So we're just keeping an eye on China who are behind Hungary and now they go down as well. This is absolutely remarkable. Quickly back up Wang Xinran with the changeover to Gong Li made. So the People's Republic of China have still won this just ahead of Italy. Hungary in third place. Japan in fourth, my, my, my. Well, forget everything right now because there's a lot to review in this. Nothing can be confirmed. And we also have to wonder about here the issue being for the Chinese with the Hungarians being lapped if they're judged to have uh, impeded China then that could be very problematic for the Hungarians very problematic that could result in a Card being given, yellow card being given. So Maya Samodi is the skater who is involved in that altercation with Wang Xinran. This is fascinating. They got over the line in the end to take it, the Chinese, just about. But that's one of the most remarkable 3,000 meter relay races we've seen this season. Every single team at some point went down onto the ice and had to pick themselves back up again. Who'd be a referee in this situation? It's complicated. And while we're waiting for the uh, official video review, Justin, we've been discussing this at the jury table. Yeah, possibly what's going on because we saw the video replay on the screen. In the first accident, possibly in a Japanese skater who was involved in an active skater who was involved in the, in the crash. And at the end, because uh, the team of Hungary was lapped, so uh, they should give, they should give uh, well, the lead to. Uh, I think we've got the China. Japan and Hungary collision that's got to be looked at, but also Hungary and China as well. Yes, and we know what we have, what's been decided. We have an outcome. We start with a penalty. Or Hungary have got a yellow card, and that penalty will surely be for a lapped team impeding the uh, Chinese. Japan have also picked up a penalty. For Hungary. So let's Indeed look at this again. First of all, Japan for the uh, lane so change. China wins the B final. Italy second, that makes them five and six overall. That's why Japan have been given a penalty. And then it's the this here from Maya Samudi. Yellow card for 
the impeding of the race because the Hungarians were lapped. And so that is uh, disqualification from the race and exclusion from the remainder of the competition. I mean, we are in the B final stage anyway, but it is uh, a serious one for the Hungarians, yellow carded. We go to the men's 5,000 meter relay B final. After an extraordinary women's 3,000 meter B final, what will we get now in the men's competition? Go to the start. Ready. Belgium, Japan, and Kazakhstan are the three nations in this men's 5,000 meter relay B final. The full squad of five for the Belgians, Stein Desmed, number 12, 58, Ward de Petre, 75, Vare Van Damme, 94, Adrian de Wachter, 95, Enzo Brus, for Japan, 21, Miata Shogo, 28, Yoshinaga Kazuki, 42, Hayashi Kose, 45, Watanabe Keita, 182, Yokoyama Hiroki. The full squad of 5 4 Kazakhstan, 11 Denis Nikisha, 32 Adil Galiachmetov, 14 Ertilek Kazgali, 44 Yekebalan Shamulkanov, and 124 Masaid Zhachibayev. So much more space on the ice when it's a three strong final. It allows us just a little time to think about what is to come. This is the last race of the penultimate session. Then there is a break of around about 90 minutes before the women's and men's 1000 meter quarter finals. That will go through to the semi-final stage and the finals. Those 1,000 metre finals for the women and the men set to begin around about 20 past three Rotterdam time. And then it will be all about the relays. The mixed team relay B and A finals and the women's and men's A finals in the three and the 5,000 metre relay competitions. All of that to conclude our coverage in Rotterdam at the World Championships. The World Championships so far that has seen Lin Xiaojun and Sun Long win gold for the People's Republic of China in the men's 500 metres and the 1500 metres. It was Kazakhstan's Denis Nikisha who won silver in the 500. Great result for him and Jordan Pierre Gilles of Canada took bronze in the 1500. Jens von Wout of the Netherlands won the silver medal. And Australia's Brendan Corey was the winner of the bronze. A super result for Corey. Always dangerous for medal positions. And now together with Kazakhstan and Belgium. Battling for the win in the B final. It's 28 left to go. And the in the women's competition, uh, Kim Boutin of Canada won the uh, 500 meters title. We had uh, Cassandra Velzibor taking silver and Christian Santos Griswold winning bronze. 1500 meters, Kim Gilly. The World Cup Crystal Globe winner ahead of Kristen Santos Griswold and Corinne Stoddard, both of the United States of America. Now we have 25 laps remaining in this race with Belgium ahead of Kazakhstan, who are in turn ahead of Japan. With the leading position for Belgium. 
aantal van deze mannen gaan we natuurlijk vanmiddag ook nog uh, terugzien. Uh, Marin van Dam. Ahead of uh, Yoshinaga Kazuki. De Japanners hebben ja. Ja. en uh, Hayashi. Ja. Kazakhstan team en de Shamulganov in third position. Quite a calm race so far in stark contrast to the women's 3000B final. In play for Japan is Hayashi Korse, who's looking at the back of the Belgian team. Wondering about making that move when the time is right, the Japanese to keep an eye on Kazakhstan. And here comes the Japanese move. Thought that was impending. Decision was made by uh, Yoshinaga. Enough was enough, and uh, Japan have provided the first uh, real change to things. We now see uh, Kazakhstan securing second with Shamulkhanov. Um, tricky change over there for Belgium, just had to make a little adjustment. 15 or so left. Miyata Shogo, who changes over to uh, Hayashi. The Japanese who forced the issue and decided to uh, up the tempo a little. 45 is Watanabe Keita. 40 is Nutile Kazgali of Kazakhstan. The Belgians now have got to make their riposte. With 95, Enzo Proust to passes to Van Dam. Now we're seeing a real increase in the tempo with nine and a half remaining. Where are the fans of Team Japan, Miho? It's a Where are the fans of Kazakhstan? Shogo Miata now. It's going to be a fantastic atmosphere in the later session for all of the finals. Anticipating something around a sold-out crowd as Nikisha, the silver medalist in the 500 from yesterday, passes over to Masai Zakhtibayev. Kazakhstan are ahead in this B final. Now the Belgians are in second place as Kazakhstan really pushing to open up a gap. Japan sneaking around to move into second place, but there's a stretch happening between first and second, courtesy of this really good work from Yekebalan Shamulkhanov. Looking good now, Kazakhstan, looking really good, but the Japanese are coming back, and the Belgians have overcooked it. Hayashi moves ahead of Masai Zakhtibayev, two left now contending to win this B final, and it's going to be, by the looks of things, the Japanese. Hayashi Kose secures the B final win for Japan, and they will now hope that they can find a way to squeeze onto the podium if there are complications in the A final. They will at least be fifth, the Japanese. Belgium having problems as Ward Petre just about gets over the line. Good win for the Japanese. Delight for their fans watching on. Always nice to see your nation win at the World Championships. Whether it's a B final, an A final, a victory in a heat. That sight of seeing your team crossing the line first. Congratulations to the Japanese. It was a very good finish. Super smooth racing from Hayashi Kose. This the moment where he found that gap. Zaksibayev just left the back door open. The win for Japan in the B final in the men's 5,000 meter relay. Kazakhstan second, Belgium third. Some way back in the end, the uh, Belgians. And this will conclude our morning session, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the skaters, thank you very much for attending. We will now prepare everything for the main... And program. that brings to a close our coverage of this penultimate session. Everything 
is on the line in the relays in about 90 minutes time when the main session begins and we see the last medals decided at the world championships the men's and women's 1000 meters and all of the relay titles what a pleasure it's been having your company for all of the action from rotterdam have a good break have a rest catch your breath and we'll see you in 90 minutes for medals medals galore when you're here in ahoy rotterdam on vg2 dan starten de wedstrijden daarvoor de pre-show en die is absoluut de moeite waard om bij te zijn dankjewel dat je erbij was namens de atleten voor de ochtendsessie En wij zijn zo rond 1 uur weer bij jullie terug. Er gaan er van allemaal leuke dingen gebeuren. Dat doen we met DJ Funky Town. Dat doen we met mooie dingen op het podium. En dat doen we natuurlijk met een mooie short track. De short track show in Nederland. It's showtime.